Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. Is this the time where the Holy Spirit kind of is allowed to speak in the awkward moments? Oh, yeah. I mean, we see we see people break down in tears. We see people just, they, you can see the, the gears turning. And that is a holy moment that mm. I'm seeing death to life just right before our eyes. Like, wow. there is nothing better than than seeing that. And, and having a student that you're training, the only thing better than you leading someone to Christ is getting to help someone else catch that bug. Because yeah. it's evangelism. Mo, evangelistic momentum is like, it's contagious. And so when we have students sharing their stories, we get together with our leadership team. They say, Hey, we talked to John. This was his story. He's ready. He came in, he came to Christ. He's going to get baptized. Like let's, let's celebrate that just adds fuel to the fire. Every, every gospel conversation we have adds fuel to the fire. And so our goal this year is to share the gospel with a thousand students. Wow. Okay, on, cool. Face to face. So we talked through about a thousand to kind of funnel it down, but our goal is a thousand to share with. Uh, no, I, I love that. At Within Reach Global um, Ministry, I lead here in Thailand. It was in China for many years, still continued in, in, in China with our indigenous missionaries. We call that the big net. You know, that's casting mm -hmm. the big net out. You're not going to grab every fish, but the, the smaller net, the, the few that remain, I, I don't even like to consider the few. When you're talking a multiplicative, you can see transformative things happen. I also love that you're saying it's not all about you. It's about empowering that next friend um, or uh, generation or, or whatever you want to call it in your context. Mm -hmm. I mean, the new believer, again, that's that's going to be where you see movement happen is through the those newer believers and us as we lead them to Christ. We're pouring in old school navigator Dawson Trotman style, just discipleship, whether that's a group, whether that's one on one. But but you're really loving pouring into new believers and you're finding the ones that want to share their faith. That, and those are the ones that you pour even deeper in. Like that's kind of our filter for who we're going to invest in more deeply. Those that want move with the movers, you know, yeah. you're looking for people that want to share their faith. And, uh, and a lot of times those guys or girls, like there's a girl named Sophia that we led to Christ a while, uh, a year after we led her to Christ, the next, next, um, semester, she led 10 girls to Christ. Wow. <laughs> she wow. was in the Baptist church, just. One after the other. Dunk, come dunk, in. dunk. <laughs> so, but she just like doesn't know any better. She just like is bold, very invited, you know. And so I, I think people really overanalyze evangelism. Mm -hmm. yeah, they they yeah. make it far more complicated than it needs to be. And because I believe that like the gospel can be a great litmus test to see where the person at is at. So like the, the whole angle scale thing, negative 10 to negative to zero, where zero is their conversion. Negative 10 is like someone that's absolutely against. The great way to kind of see where they're at is to low pressure, start a spiritual conversation yeah. or share the gospel. And, and you'll know, okay, this is a negative four. This person may be close. So I need to so maybe we'll, maybe he's open to studying the gospel. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we can start this discovery group and, and engage a process. So it's not either or relational evangelism or initiative. There's kind of like this middle ground where I try to hang out in is I, I call it um, intentional relational evangelism. Intentional relational evangelism. Well, I think when you mentioned those three words together, it does not sound to me like you're walking around campuses with a placard saying God hates fags. Right. I mean, it sounds very different from the horrible examples that we've seen that make the news, right? When it comes to evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's more intentional than just, well, we try to sew a big net and talk to lots of people, but we also look at the campus, the whole pancake versus the waffle thing, yep. you know, the yep. whole people that. where we divide the campus into little niches. So our goal is to start, evangelistic discovery groups, evangelistic Bible studies in every fraternity and sorority on our campus. So we have 30 campus, 30 fraternities and sororities. So we're in about four right now. Um, but we have little teams of students that are actually rushing fraternities and they already have friends in our ministry, but they want to go in and they're going to rush 
much this fraternity and they're starting these Bible studies and they'll, they're having 15, 10, uh, a bunch of different students come to these groups because they're an insider. And yeah. so you get into this little niche of people and you can, you can start a group that way. Okay. You mentioned the pancake and the waffle, but you didn't expound on that. So for those who are watching or listening, you're like, well, what are you talking about? Kind of break that down for me because that is um, something that's very, I think, uh, uh, intrinsic to our ministry at Within Reach Global as well. We're talking about, in our case, ethno-linguistic tribes, right? Gospel-deprived peoples. Right. They're totally unreached, have no access to who in the world Jesus is. How do you permeate any culture, whether it be that one I just mentioned or college campus in America? What is the waffle pancake deal here? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's so simple, but it's great. It's like a lot of people think if we just pour the syrup of the gospel— onto the world, enough of it, and we just get the right, and even especially now thinking about like the way things are with this virus and everyone's promoting their, they're celebrating how many views our Facebook Live has when it takes like three seconds for it to count as a view. You know, it's it's like, maybe that's not the goal. Maybe, maybe our goal is not a view, maybe it's how many places we're getting into the gospel. So that's, that's a side point. But a lot of people think it's like a pancake. You just pour the gospel syrup on it and it'll just naturally spread out. But it's more like a waffle where you got to get it, get the syrup into every little uh, barrier. There's barriers between people groups and even on a, in a city or in a college campus or anywhere you are, there's even smaller groups of people in um, oikoses where there's different, um, kind of networks of relationship, re relational spheres that you want to send people into or, or you, you want to break into through a person of peace or someone that that is going to lend you their access into that group so that you can share the gospel and, and eventually start a group or a church. Okay, next time I'm at IHOP, I'm going to look at that pancake or waffle way different now. <laughs> I, I, I love the gospel implications there. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join His mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch, and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.